Hello and welcome. This is Derwin Banks welcoming you to another show. Uh, today I've got a lovely interview with Charlotte Palmer, who I met at the Western Price Conference uh, last week, and we recorded this interview in Imperial Box One at Sandown Park. I'm not sure whether it's the Royal Box, but Imperial is close as we're going to get, I think. Anyway, Charlotte will be talking to us uh, later on, but I thought I'd just like to remember something uh, in the newspaper a year or more ago, and it was about self-medicating. And uh, it went like this. Get smart, keep well, it only takes the brain of an insect. So in the battle for health, we need to get as smart as butterflies, moths, and ants, but also baboons and chimpanzees. This does not sound too difficult, does it? Well, Jap Larude, lead author of this study of Emory University, Atlanta, in his paper, said, we thought that only animals with a high cognitive ability could self-medicate, but now we are showing that even insects can do it. And Mark Hunter, an ecologist at the University of Michigan said, when we watch animals foraging, we now have to ask, are they visiting the grocery store or the pharmacy? So chimps with worm infestations, infestations, so chimps with worm infections eat plants and antiparasitic properties. Wood ants and honeybees incorporate antimicrobial resin into their nests to prevent microbial growth in the colony. It is thought that primates pass this knowledge. It is thought that primates pass on this knowledge, but insects have behaviour that is innate. So can we learn anything from this? Well, firstly, it would seem that nature has the plants and substances to heal us, and animals and insects know this but we seem to be confused because the modern pharmacy and grocery store work together. One produces illness and one to attempt to cure. Generally, wild animals, unlike us, will not be eating food that makes them ill. They are self-medicating for infections that we also pick up, uh, not for food-related disease. So our learning process must be to understand that food can kill, but also that food can heal. The trick is to know the difference and reject the killing type and go for the type to keep you well. It is your own economic power that will make the changes to the food system. Government will not legislate to remove killing food from the market, so you must do it yourself. Do not buy processed food, make it yourself. Cut out sugar and fizzy drinks. Never buy corn oil or soya oil. Never buy margarine type spreads and never roast your potatoes in oil of any kind except coconut, which is a saturated fat. Saturated fat is unharmed by heat, but all other oils are degraded and therefore harmful for your body. When you make your own food, you can regulate what's in it. Therefore, you take control of that part of your health that food supports. Just imagine how good it would be to feel well with no food issues. I met someone last night who had made the change and she was vibrant and full of life and wondered why it had taken us so long to realise the importance of cutting out junk. It is that simple. That's easy to say, but for so many it's very difficult, and my aim would be sport and encourage as many people to learn how to improve their lives by changing the food they eat. Well, that was an amazing piece of research, wasn't it? And uh, you know it's true because, you know, if you own dogs and you go and see them chewing on grass or something like that, um, that's what they're doing, it's uh, elementary self-medication. And of course with our animals, you know, cows and sheep and so on, when they were grazing over not so improved pastures, 
uh, they made their omega-3 in their bodies uh, and they were somewhat more similar to the wild animals that we used to hunt which had about the right balance of fatty acids for us. So you know I think we can learn a lot if we start to think about these things and realize how food has to be balanced and food is the most important part of keeping us well and it certainly is the biggest thing you do to your body or your life. Okay here's another little rant I wrote a little while ago and its title is Is One More Pill The Answer? So better education regarding fats and refined sugars. Drug manufacturer GlaxoSmithKline recently announced that they were setting aside £1.57 billion as compensation for damage done by one drug called Evendia given to people with diabetes. The product was once the world's best-selling drug for controlling blood sugar levels in diabetics. However, re-examination of safety data revealed that it also appeared to raise the risk of heart attack particularly concerning in diabetic patients already at high risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Type 2 diabetes is caused by insufficient insulin production in the pancreas and is often associated with obesity and excessive sugar consumption. I believe that better education with regards to fats and refined sugar is what is really required to help address diabetes without potentially fatal side effects, not just one more pill. Make it a national priority to encourage the public to engage with their health and fitness. It is naturally acknowledged that obesity and many of the chronic diseases that result from it is largely caused by food abuse. It is hard to blame people when high calorie junk food is deliberately made to be addictive and can have similar euphoric effects on the brain to heroin and cocaine. The answer to this problem therefore is more complex than simply eating less. It involves retraining our emotions and how we connect with the world, encouraging people to engage with their health and keep fit using a combination of better food choices plus regular exercise. This can be very challenging. However, we must make the effort as it is clear that failure to do so will not be remedied by just one more pill. So transfer money spent on drug development to publicising how many cancers are caused by dietary and lifestyle factors. Incidence of cancer is increasing at an alarming rate, with an estimated 12.7 million people diagnosed with cancer worldwide in 2008. Furthermore, it's acknowledged that cancer treatments can be harmful and are often associated with many long-term complications. Millions of pounds are raised for cancer research, with large amounts of money put forward to help pharmaceutical companies in the continuing search for a cure. Meanwhile, numbers keep on rising. Money may be better spent looking into and publicising why different forms of cancer occur and how they are affected by dietary and lifestyle factors. It may be that we do not need just one more pill. So educate the public about the link between cardiovascular health and diet. The role of diet in cardiovascular health is one which has been heavily debated for the past 50 years and still remains a topic of considerable controversy. It is now thought that promotion of the low fat, high carbohydrate diet may have encouraged a shift to high carbohydrate and therefore high sugar diets which could have played an unintended role in the current epidemic of obesity. Lipid abnormalities, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndromes. In addition, 
the side effects seen in a substantial number of people taking medications such as statins to reduce cholesterol levels which can cause muscle pain and liver damage indicate that better dietary choices and increased exercise would be more helpful in the fight against chronic disease than just one more pill. Investigate and prove whether food abuse is behind new and more resistant modern illness. Ancient people did not die from the types of illness we commonly see today. It is thanks to the work of scientists and pharmaceutical companies that antibiotics and immunisation keep us safe from waterborne infections, diseases of previous years. Huge advances in the understanding of, physio of the physiology of the human body enable doctors to perform miracles with increasing innovative, complex and less invasive operations. However, our food abuse bodies continue to succumb to illnesses that are increasingly resistant to conventional treatment. More and more people are beginning to think the answer is not just one more pill. Make the food debate at the centre of the health and wide being debate and well-being debate. Change the emphasis from treating the outcome to preventing the ill health in the first place. What's needed now is clear thinking and a new paradigm to debate and test ideas that will benefit society as a whole. The food debate must be at the forefront of new thinking. Much of what is consumed in the modern world does not count as food at all. The solution is simple. Think about real food. Food used to be produced by many people with small tractors. Today, fewer people with huge tractors do the job and we throw away 50% of all the food that's produced. Meanwhile, billions of, spend, of pounds are spent in the health service treating the consequence of inappropriate diets. We can escape the Western diet and by doing so, most of the chronic diseases that diet causes. Does this lead you to think that the answer is not just one more pill? There we are. What do you think about that? Any comments uh, would well, be greatly received. Um, some of the statistics and um, uh, information in there uh, I have references for, um, which if you're interested, uh, we could pass on to you. And now we go on to Charlotte. Charlotte is also very interested in uh, oils and fats and essential fats. And I think she's got something amazing to tell us all. Okay, here we are now at Sandown Park. And I had the pleasure yesterday to meet Charlotte Palmer. And she tells me she was a food specialist. And she was working on the sea green stand, which is all about seaweed. And I'm going to ask her a few questions about that. But most of all, she said she could talk for England. So I thought, this is the ideal person to interview. So Charlotte, welcome. It's absolutely Hello. brilliant Hello. that you agreed to come and have a little chat with me. My pleasure. Thank is you this for inviting your, me. Is this your first um, radio or television appearance? No, it's not actually. No, so you're an old hand, are you? A little bit. I've done a couple of interviews with radio before. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> So, well, this, this hopefully, this is obviously going out to the world via the internet. Fabulous. And we'll be going to keep it so it can be recycled occasionally. Great. And, of course, once we put something on the internet, we're there for life, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah. So tell me about your story. Okay. How did, how did you kind of start oh, goodness. thinking about it? Um, my story is that I was originally in the art and fashion world. Right. And um, I was a bit of a workaholic and I basically ended up with adrenal fatigue. Right. Um, just exhaustion. I run myself. Do you know, so down. many people become yeah. therapists because they get in a bad place themselves, <laughs> That's don't right, they? Or, yeah. or, or people start to think about food because they become ill. That's right. And I also, pre prior to that, I had terrible skin problems as a teenager, which destroyed my confidence, my self confidence. And I, I lost faith in the medical profession after a certain period of time, after I'd been 
given numerous amounts of antibiotics and uh, I think I reached a point where I felt that I needed to start taking control of my own life. Well looking done. at my health yes. and looking at my diet and I started to read a lot about the environment um, and about organic farming and about food and about diet and uh, I was able to um, really help myself and my skin a lot and my energy levels through my choices I made with my diet so yeah because you you know what your energy your energy system is your mitochondria that's right so you've got to feed your mitochondria and exactly. they're beautiful little things aren't they yes they are so, <laughs> so uh, how long was it before you thought oh it's my mitochondria I'm feeding <laughs> I don't know at what point I recognize that but I think the, mit the mitochondria is the energy system, but it doesn't. The thing about the body is we, we refer to the body as different organs in the body, yeah. but the, the different organs in the body don't recognise themselves as being separate and unique. It's, it's an entire system, which is completely system. unlike the medical profession, yeah. who treat each piece as individual. Exactly. Don't they? Yeah. So the body works as a whole, you know. And yes, <laughs> okay, it's always good to start off with the gut yep. and, and work work. It's what yeah. feeds everything. Exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. It's always good to start with the gut. So yours would have been compromised by all those antibiotics. Exactly, that's right. So did you start to think, how can I rebuild my? Yeah, good I started bacteria? to explore gut health. You know, and um, in, on my journey of exploring gut health, I discovered sea greens um, because it's a prebiotic. It means it feeds the friendly bacteria in the gut. I recognised that my gut flora was out of balance. So I worked on, on repopulating my gut with, with probiotics, but I recognised that it was more than just putting the probiotics back in. You know, I felt like I needed to kind of really um, repair my gut because it, it was damaged in some way from all the antibiotics I've been taking as a child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, um, when, when we're born, we're in, in a sterile environment as mm. we're being made, mm. and our gut is populated as you're born through the birth canal well, it is to, if your to a some extent yeah. so, so that's why it's important you know, if you're going to be a mother you need to look after your gut that's because right. that, and that's one of the reasons we're getting worse and worse worse health is mm. because gradually we're having more and more antibiotics and that's problems. right yes and, and, and the mother does pass her friendly bacteria onto the child yeah. In, yeah. In, the, in the birth canal so you worked on your bacteria and started to feel that. better that's right yeah and um I found out a lot about that. I um, I picked up on seaweed, feeding the gut flora, but I was also very interested in essential fatty acids as well, um, feeding the, the villi, pre repairing the microvilli, and um, taking out things like wheat and sugar and damaged oils. And on my journey, I started to find out about all the mythology around food and eating. <laughs> Okay, which I'm sure yes. you know about, Darwin. But I, yes. I realised that um, all this mythology about low fat and um, cooking vegetable oils and eat, eating margarines is incredibly detrimental to health. Oh. And I'm so pleased that I found out early and I was able to change that in my diet, you know? Yes. Because I know that you sell these lovely, um, you, you grow and sell beautiful linseeds, essential fatty acids, but. Um, we do need a balance. We need the, the other fats as well to cause we do, we do. And they and I, I think I've said to a number of my interviewees or people I have a conversation with, women are mm. terrible about that. You mentioned mm. fat, and they throw out their hands and think, oh, I can't have any of that. I but know. in fact, it's really important for That's them, right. isn't I it? I eat plenty of, of good quality fat. I, yeah. like, I love my butter and I love my, my cream, full fat, dairy, raw and unpasteurised. So, right, yeah. and sometimes you know they they want to stop these things, don't they? You know, oh, they I know they try, the they're trying to ban it. Yeah, but the the people that are making decisions tend to be the people that don't have the knowledge. Mm. What can we do about that? Do you think? Just keep campaigning. Keep, keep campaigning. Signing, uh, signing petitions, writing letters to the MPs. But maybe it's just changing everybody we talk to. You know, I'm giving out, you're giving out, mm. and we've, that's where we've got to start. It's people that can take control, isn't it? And once they have the knowledge, if yeah. we can give them knowledge and create that golden key for them. Exactly. That's have you what been I thinking do. about that? What yeah, you, I mean, I, I'm a public speaker. I go and speak to groups of people and I, right. I, I educate people, and then they have the freedom to choose. But right now, people don't have freedom because they don't know what they're choosing. So, therefore, is it a choice? It's not, is it? No, it's not, is it? You know, they're being told to eat lots of um, cereals of low-fat pasteurised milk for breakfast and 
eat bread full of sugar we're using margarine and just eating huge amounts of sugar and damaged oils mm. of course you it's really very difficult to make those big corporations change unless you hit their pockets isn't it? well exactly it's not about i mean i recognize that you can't take on the big corporations but you can educate the public and once the public know then they would they vote with their it. purses yeah. with their wallets if they sure. if they stopped buying spreads and margarines for two weeks mm. The industry will go bankrupt. There's already a shift already because there the great is, margarine there? hoax has been yeah. uncovered and people are now shifting towards yeah. butter. I was talking to waste. a Waitrose buyer the other day and I mm. said, have you got any stores where, because Waitrose, mm. I would thought the more intelligent people possibly shop mm. there. Well, is, can I say that? You can say that. <laughs> um, and he said he does have two stores mm. that have more butter. And I said, would you like to do something for the health of our nation and stop selling margarine he mm. declined that offer at the moment but. well he, he would <laughs> wouldn't he but I mean I go and work at the John Lewis food hall in um, in Oxford Street which is a, a Waitrose supermarket doing a, a demo for Koyo which is a coconut yogurt company and the amount of people I have to consistently educate over and over and over again about the healthy fats in coconuts because they all think it's going to give you a heart attack it's going to make you fat and it's bad for your cholesterol. Every single yeah. one of them. You can consistently... Well, I say every single one. You get the occasional person who's, who's informed. Sometimes it's a, it's great a, a that science, that happens, science grad. <laughs> and sometimes we get into big, wonderful debates around the table, you know. But there's an awful lot of people that, that simply trust their, their Harley Street doctor or their heart surgeon who's told them not to touch mm. avocados, coconut oil or butter. It's quackery, isn't it? It is total quackery, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's phenomenal, because I'm the out there. The is becoming on the other foot. Yeah. yeah. I, I had one gentleman say to me, are you telling me that I pay my Harley Street heart specialist £100 an hour, and he doesn't know what he's talking about? And I said, I'm not telling you that, I'm just inviting you to look at the evidence and think for yourself, <laughs> rather than just pay your Harley Street specialist £100 an hour and believe what he says, you know. But he was very confronted, and he, he didn't really want to take it on. Oh. So I gave him an article by Dr Dwight Lundell, who's a heart surgeon, he's recently retired, uh, all about um, how the whole saturated fat and cholesterol hypothesis is untrue. I, I was reading a little article read about the other day, and of course mm. apparently the Seventh-day Adventists mm. and the Mormons, mm. and I forget which way around it was, but one's vegetarian don't eat any meat mm. and the others eat meat and right. of course those that eat meat they don't have the heart problems right okay. so that when when they've done all these comparisons mm. about saturated fats and so on often it has been comparisons but when you look at two groups like that mm. it becomes plain it does i mean it's all about context as long as your meat yeah. is uh, grass-fed you know the problem is is that people are eating t too many people in this country particularly are eating meat that's been fed grains and, and corn and uh, soy and yeah. animals weren't designed to eat grains and no and of course that could also be the same with with uh, organic farmers in some way they could they could feed their animals organic soya not really realizing that that was still the wrong food for them to oh, have yeah, absolutely they feed their animals whatever is most economical for them that's the yeah. problem and they're not thinking about the the bigger bigger picture bigger picture so you you uh, how did you become to, how, how how did you get to be able to be public speaking how did you get that started well i was i was working at whole foods uh, and when it was fresh and wild and i was their food specialist i was educating the public on a one to one basis right that was my job to educate the customers that came through the door that were asking what's quinoa how do you cook it or yeah. what can i do with, with seaweed or you know anything and uh, i wanted to kind of uh grow and stretch myself a little bit beyond okay. my comfort zones and I decided to start getting little workshops together in the store and get groups of people to come and I just talk to them about a detox or weight loss or aphrodisiacs whatever you know whatever was right. the subject at the time they were full up I guess weren't and, they? Yeah, yeah and I I uh I was quite nervous at first and used to feel quite sick before I went over and gave the talks but it just got me really um exercised around it I got really um very I worked my my public speaking muscle you know got Correct. it really, really bulging brilliant. and then I went and um did a teacher training course right. and I trained as an art teacher as well 
and I can tell you that's the best training really because if you're in a room with 30 children and you're nervous they'll You've sniff it, it and they'll <laughs> eat you alive <laughs> can they smell it yes they, they can, can smell fear for sure <laughs> they, can. they can yes and you have to go in really confident and you have to project your voice and that's the best training teacher training yeah mm. brilliant. so I started to just go out there and um, ask people if they'd like a talk about healthy eating and um, I started off just speaking at cancer care centres, cancer care support centres, weight loss centres, diabetic support centres, um, at schools, things like that. Yes, I, I've done sort of women's institutes. Yes, isn't that fun? <laughs> they are amazing. I think yeah. I've, I've, I've sort of about 10 years probably, and, and mm. over the course of time I think I've met about 25 land girls. Mm. <laughs> so I'll start Wonderful. my talk saying, are there any doctors or nurses, yeah. or are you all too young to be land girls? <laughs> and if you've got one or two, it really starts off... Yeah. The conversation and the Women's Institute have been really great, great on uh, trying to support farmers, dairy farmers, and things. Yes, I've heard they're great. I've, yeah. heard, I've never spoken at a Women's Institute, but I'd love to actually. Yeah, it's a yeah. bit of an aspiration. They, they um, make you audition. Okay. And I remember my audition, there was about 200 women with pieces of paper. Wonderful. And they grade you. Wow. <laughs> they're all sitting there making marks down. And you what think. grade did you get? Well, they. I, I got on the speaking the circuit of yeah, Sussex great. anyway, great. <laughs> so that was well fun. Done. So have a go at the Women's yeah. Institute, really, really worthwhile doing. So um, is, do, do, you want, uh, do you want to carry on with the fat bit? Or, I can or, carry or on you with spoke the fat a little bit I don't about mind. I, don't, I can carry on with the fat bit. I, I mean, I'll just, in, in, in short, we've been told for a long time that um, a low-fat diet... Wasn't it? Yes, a low-fat diet is... Uh, what we need to do for our health and for weight loss but actually it's the opposite okay and I just want to say a couple of things about that when you take fat out of a dairy product you're left with lactose which is a milk sugar and it is a lactose that's left in the dairy product which causes the weight gain not the fat that you've taken out of it so you're drinking more sugar when you take fat out of dairy on top of that it, it's not a whole and complete food anymore so it's not um, natural. The body doesn't recognise it as a whole and complete food, and it's missing things, nutrients like calcium, etc. So, an important fat. So, what happens is you drink it, and or you ingest it, and your body, a, a hormone called leptin, which regulates how much you've had to eat, will, will switch off. So, you end up being more hungry. And it also, because it's more sugar in a low-fat dairy product, it will raise your blood sugar levels yeah. much higher, and then you'll have a spike because your insulin, insulin, your pancreas has to produce more insulin, and then you'll have a crash later on in the day. Mm. So all of those factors encourage people that are on low-fat diets, especially for breakfast in the morning, end up eating, end up eating um, more sugar and carbohydrates yeah. later on in the day. That leptin is a great thing, isn't it? I, yes. I tell people about that. It's when, when you, if you crash yes. in an aeroplane in the Andes yes. and some are still alive, mm. some are dead, all the ones that are alive, when their body is, has, has too much leptin, mm. that removes their mor moral scruples really? and they eat their fellow passengers. Wow. <laughs> so, aren't we amazing? <laughs> We're run by emotions and hormones. Yes, we are, we? pretty much. So, yeah. we can't really be scientifically analysed, can't we? Anytime mm. you hear the word, words science based medicine, I think mm. you kind of think that's quackery <laughs> <laughs> well I don't know enough about it but yeah there is, there's a lot of quack quackery in a lot of things actually it, I was I was at a conference setting up the integrated oncology society that Yester Life mm. organised and there was okay. a professor there yeah. and that was what he said so I think I can Fabulous. repeat that great I think you can yes anyway so great it's great, great to hear about that what's the point of drinking white water that's what skim milk is isn't it yes well it's sugar water Sugar water. Yeah. It's even worse than that's right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, what's the next the next bit? Um, eat full fat foods. Eat whole eat foods. Food eat whole foods food. that are as nat close to nature as possible. My my little uh, talk uh, thought on that was use your modern day spear mm. to eat like Paleolithic man. And and that's what's right. your modern day spear? Your credit card. So you use your credit card to buy yeah. food as similar as you can. That's right. Yeah. I don't use my credit card, but I use my, yeah. my debit so card. So <laughs> what is it, I mean, what is it you can say as a woman when mm -hmm. I get confronted by, uh, you know, the I, when I say to them, oh, you know, you, you fat worries you to death. When, what can you say to women to, women to get... Women are so worried about fat, yeah. and it's really um, crazy. Because they, what I say to women, because I promote a, a, a very high-fat product, 
I say to them, okay, fat is incredibly important for every part of your body. Your hormones are dependent upon it. Your brain loves it. Your fat soluble vitamins, your essential fatty acids are cofactors that they need to be they need the presence of a saturated fat in order to be absorbed properly. Fat doesn't make you fat. That is mythology. And yeah. I explain it to them and I say there's no science behind this. This is mythology. This is something that was kind of made up in the nineteen fifties for political reasons and for, for political gain and um, you know if it's not true there's no. no science behind it and I I tend to manage to persuade by that point but if they need any more further convincing I just give them a few yeah. um, articles on studies that they've done on children and how um, they were all fed um, a skimmed milk diet and they all gained weight and ate more sweets yeah it's all out there, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. We've, we've just got to make it accessible for people to yeah. understand. So so we've dealt, dealt with milk, and the other things, obviously, are, are the margarines and spreads. Absolutely, So yeah. none of those have any, any value at all. Absolutely not, no. They're no. totally worthless nutritionally. Not only are they worthless, they're, red, they're very harmful to health. Yeah. As they're inflammatory. I know when you buy a loaf of bread, you put it in a paper bag, mm. and you'll see there's all oil on it, fat on it. So... I think what I've heard is that a lot of all these modern bread machines, mm. Mm. you know, factory machines, they have to put oil in so they can pump it up with compressed air and they don't leave it to rise naturally. So really? you, there, there are things you're getting oil yeah. and the wrong side of fats in that you don't really realise. Mm, for sure, they use a lot of trans fats in, in modern processed breads to um, extend the shelf life. But we've been told they've got a lot of trans fats out, haven't they? But there's never a label on bread to tell you what's in it, is there? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're buying um, a commercial bread, you know, commercial um, wholemeal bread, then there'll be an ingredients list. And if it says vegetable oil, vegetable oils are very, very, very sensitive to heat, light and oxygen. They should never be heated. No. They should always be cold pressed. So if you, there's a vegetable fat in your, in your bread, unless it's a, um, a coconut or a palm fat, it's going to be a trans fat. It's as simple yeah. as that because it, it shouldn't be heated. Yes, I tell people about coconut oil, but I say, you know, the palm oil, and that's mm. what fish and chips are cooked in, so mm. might boycott fish and chip stops until they cook in saturated fat. What do you think about that? Is that a good, up, good plan? I think that's a great plan, yeah. <laughs> but with the palm oil, not only are you killing rainforests, but you're killing orangutans. I know, I so know. So if we want to save mm. rainforests and save the world, we stop. We shouldn't be eating palm oil. And right. no soy oil either. Mm. Do we no. need more soy oil? No. No, no we don't. That's do really... We? Not very nice. Not very nice. No. So, do you think we? Do you think we've done that? Do you think women now are going to start thinking for themselves? I, I mean, lovely. I know men can't think for themselves because no. <laughs> the, the men come along by my stool and I say, well, I'll just start to talk to them about this, and they, I say, oh, my wife deals with all yes. that. <laughs> yes, men often do that. So yeah. they're hopeless unless they're a GP, <laughs> and then they know it then, all. Well, that's even Bless worse. Them. Yeah. Okay, so. That went along, and then you, I, I met you at the seaweed stand or sea green stand. How did that happen? How did me working with sea green? Yes. Well, I, I when I went, when I was at Whole Foods, I developed relationships with a lot of different companies, and I wanted to just work with some companies that I really loved, and yeah. I really loved their products. Because you sea need to have seaweed, don't you? If we had seaweed once a week, we'd be much better, wouldn't we? We would, yeah. But um, so it, they've developed a way of helping us to get some seaweed every week well it, it might seem a bit strange to some people but it's very nutrient dense sea vegetables have more have a lot of micronutrients in them that are missing in land vegetables and they're very rich in iodine as well and um having a little bit of seaweed in your diet every day wouldn't you know and of course it used help. to be part of ancient peoples and and sort of island people's life in a big way exactly, didn't it exactly yeah it was a big part of, of ancient people's diets and we're not getting enough of it in our diet right and they now. used to travel a long way to get their seaweed exactly, exactly. and I think I've seen I don't, have you seen it there's somebody who sells lamb that's mm. been grazed on seaweed have you seen those at various shows and exhibition um, I'm aware of it I know yeah. that Simon Ranger Seagreen sells his seaweed to race horses and farmers alike right yeah. so I was reading how good it was for the colon that's right so what goes on down there? How can seaweed help that? <laughs> well, it helps to cleanse, clean out mucus attached to the colon. It also feeds the friendly bacteria that's in, in the uh, digestive system. So. 
So we've got to look after those all That's the time, right. haven't we? Absolutely, yes. So, and but it can help to rebalance, rebalance things. What do, what does that mean? Um, well, our modern diet isn't particularly um, balanced in many ways. Seaweed is alkalizing and it's cleansing. Right. It grabs hold of heavy metals and drags them out of the body. That's it also thing. feeds good gut flora. So it's it's got a few different um, elements of it that actually help to rebalance the body. Unfortunately, if the, bo- if the body goes out of balance, it starts to um, desperately try to rebalance it. The body will never work against you. It will, it will always do its best to help, you know, to rebalance. To heal itself. Exactly, yeah. to heal itself. Mm. And um, seaweed... Um, gives the body back nutrients and it alkalizes it as well. Yes, we're like a cabbage patch, aren't we? You yes. Know, you, need, you need to be the right pH to, yes. gr- to, to assimilate the fertilizer. That's what we do on the yes. farm. If the pH is wrong, it doesn't exactly. work properly. The exactly. manurial value won't, won't come out. So it's quite amazing. Brilliant. So um, uh, what's the rest of your... Have you got another life plan? What's the rest of your plan? <laughs> how, how are you going to uh, continue your crusade? Um, I'm I'm still doing my public speaking, and I write for some magazines. I've got little articles that are in Prima and Cosmopolitan and oh, right. Bella magazine. I get asked to write for journalists. So, right, real, real high level stuff. No, not really. And I I regularly write recipes for Holistic Therapist magazine as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. Food is my thing. I love food. That's why I love seaweed because it's not a. It's not an extracted mi- uh, vitamin or mineral tablet. It is a whole, complete food. So your body fully recognises it and absorbs it all. It's not, and it's very mineral dense, so it's not in high amounts. It's just gentle amounts of vitamins and minerals going into the body every day. So is this something you can incorporate into your food somehow or put it yes. into a smoothie? Or? That's right. You can sprinkle it into food as granules or you can use a fine powder into a smoothie. It's really great. Or take a capsule if you like, but... I like sprinkling it on my food, put it in my smoothies. Yeah, it's always the best way, isn't it? Mm, it is, absolutely. That's what I tell people. Um, I rechristen my capsules pods because it's an essential <laughs> fat. You know, exactly. if, if people think it's a capsule, they think, oh, it's a supplement, I can mm. take it or leave it. Mm. But you actually have to have it every day. That's right, yeah. So it's about a little bit of commitment, isn't it? Yes, I know I'm, I know I'm not having enough seaweed. Mm. <laughs> so... I've got to get more in. Yep. <laughs> so I'll come along and see you in a minute. Great. Buy some, I think. <laughs> Good so, choice. So, um, what else? Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be giving a talk at the end of March over, um, for doctors, uh, Dr. Tim Ridge's uh, Natural Health Centre in Enfield, all about weight loss. So the whole the whole talk is going to be having emphasis on why low fat diets and calorie counting doesn't work, and then talking using a lot of the principles, the Western Price principles of getting more healthy, good quality fats. Yeah. and grass-fed protein into the diet and using seaweed as well to balance metabolism. Um, yeah, the whole kind of picture is going to be, when you think about what the kind of information that people are being given about weight loss, it's actually quite shocking. It's criminal, in fact. Well, yes, it, sure it's, you know. it results in this yo-yo affair, That's doesn't right. it? And exactly. of course, as and I, I was talking to, I think, Brian... Brian about those sort of things and so you, you have that problem uh, or any kind of problem and the next thing because you can't solve it or it's not able to be solved you get mm. antidepressants yes exactly <laughs> and it yes, sort of it just makes, yeah. escalates absolutely unfortunately we're all caught up in a vicious cycle a lot of us um, know and we're aware that we're caught up in a vicious cycle in the banking industry in the financial <laughs> industry where it's designed to keep us caught up in credit and in, in, deb, um, in debt but we don't realise that the food industry is doing exactly the same thing by keeping us caught up in a vicious cycle of, of um, constantly craving sugar and refined carbohydrates and junk food Yeah, yeah. that's how it's designed and it's designed to keep us keep coming back and buying it over again and so if there's, if there's one thing this golden key to, to tell people about what was the golden key that might people might say oh that's the reason I need to change have you worked that one out yet yes have the best breakfast ever have the best breakfast yes. I like that have, have the best breakfast ever and I, um, I've got a couple of tips for breakfast because I really love my breakfast time okay and it's like my, my favourite favourite part of the day um, one of my breakfast is a porridge which I um, I just soak my my oats overnight and then I cook it 
with a grated apple and some cinnamon. And then when it's cooked, I'll add some lovely double cream, preferably raw cream if I can get it, <laughs> and right. some um, hemp seeds, some um, milled flax seeds, and some bee pollen. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Cinnamon. And uh, that's usually pretty good. Right. And sometimes I might drizzle a hemp or a flaxseed oil in it as well if I'm, I'm feeling really, you know... Um, if you've got some of mine in the fridge. Yeah, exactly. I'm <laughs> really indulgent. And that's a really good breakfast, okay, because when you cook an apple with the porridge, the apple's rich in pectin, and that's very good for grabbing hold of heavy metals and dragging them out of the body and helping us evacuate your bowels. If you're not evacuating your bowels twice a day, you're not, your body's not doing its cleansing processes. It's not really performing them effectively and optimally. So, so what about bacon and egg? Bacon and egg is fantastic as well. That's so the you other need to buy bacon from a real... Proper, proper bacon, butcher. so you you've do. got enough fat on the bacon exactly. to fry your egg. That's exactly, yes, yeah. So bacon and egg is another one. Um, if you can have bacon and egg for breakfast, that really does keep you going up until lunch, for sure. For sure. And that's what the Stone Age people did, and they went, they ran off and hunted their animal, yeah. ate it all, came yeah. home and made love all the afternoon. Exactly. So you see, you can see yeah. how we've been de-skilled. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do we do all the afternoon? I'm still working on it with my boyfriend. I'm giving the <laughs> breakfast, but he doesn't fulfill on the other bits all the time shall we edit that bit out yeah (laughs) no I don't think we will (laughs) yeah so yeah have a big breakfast and like if you get your breakfast um, if you get your breakfast right you balance your blood sugar levels for the whole day or pretty much Mm -hmm. most of the day until you have a good lunch and that is really key because if you can balance your blood sugar levels it then has an impact on your productivity your focus your energy mm. and your rationality, like your moods. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been a low blood sugar. Oh, well, I don't. I don't know. It being in a low blood sugar moment where you've um, suddenly felt irritable and hysterical. <laughs> but I have. Have you? And that's that's because I went out without your breakfast. Right. Yes. So there we are. It's that's not, a good tip, not, isn't it? It's not wise to go out with it. Breakfast is pretty important, and if you can't, if you don't have time to make these ostentatious breakfasts and make a smoothie. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, I've, I've done a quick linseed smoothie. Just buy Beautiful. some tropical fruit juice, put two spoonfuls of linseed meal and a spoonful of linseed oil in, stir that up and drink it. Well, and if you haven't got time for anything else, that's a linseed quickie. That's, that's a lovely idea, but I wouldn't start the day with fruit juice. Right. It's the worst way to, because it's high in fructose, it'll end up spiking your blood sugar levels. So you can do that, but I do what that about, um, with the linseeds with um, a, a kind of a green juice. Yeah, that'd yeah? be good, yeah. With cucumber and celery, am I telling you off now? And a little no, bit of well, apple if you want it sweet. Or you can do it with some, I mean, I would put it with raw goat milk, personally. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm learning all the time. It works for me, it works for me. But fruit juice is not, if you start the day with fruit juice, and that is a recipe for disaster, because you'll end up just eating the wrong things later on in the day, mm. guaranteed. So fruit juice, it, no matter what anyone says, it's not healthy for anyone, ever. Unless so they're in a diabetic coma. maybe? Has that got a little bit of... Goodness in it. Not really, unless, no, unless, unless in the same, it's, same thing. Or, or the no, apple juice. A little bit of apple juice if it's balanced out with with greens like uh, cucumber and celery, avocado. I like the avocado because you put that in with the juice and it slows down the release of fructose into the blood mm. into the bloodstream. Honestly, that, that's where you're going wrong, Karen. With your, with your tropical fruit juice, <laughs> we found you out. <laughs> <coughs> but it's great with the linseeds, for sure. But I well, have linseeds in water all day and just drink the water. It's fantastic. Yes. Love yes, it. I noticed that. You had a yeah. few seeds in the bottom of oh, your Oh, yeah. Pot. You've got all that lovely mess of omega-3 in your water, hydrating. Yeah. And, you know, when you're hydrated and, and you can, you find you can just think clearer and you just feel better, you know? Yes, I've had, actually had a, quite a lot of accountants say that they're clearer thinking with their brain mm. on, that, yeah. on that front. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. Sure. So, so we've done breakfast and mm. lunchtime. It's not eat on the hoof, isn't it? You know, you oh, grab a sandwich and eat in front of the computer. I That's don't not recommend good, is it? That. No, it's not good. No. No. Try to have some. Um, so, what do you think? For protein me? and vegetables. So, oh, yeah. what, what can you, if you know, if you're working in an office and the temptation is to go to Pret and buy something, what would be the best it's, thing? To oh, do? it's tough. Well, in Pret, you can probably get a, a crayfish salad or a tuna niswa salad, something like that. I mean, salads are okay in the summer, but um, in the winter, you'd probably be looking at a soup or a stew. Yeah. And then you get to the evening, and mm. that's where people fall down, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. 
So what do we do? What's the best thing to do? Oh, it here? depends. It depends if you're if you're the, the the kind to go home and cook, and then you can obviously be organised and prepare things the night before, the day before, or or have a big vat of stew or soup that you've made that you have in the fridge. Yeah. Or there's uh, the, you know. There, there's but a more, it's more protein, isn't it, you want, rather than carbohydrates? Well, it is, yeah, when you go back in the evening. I like soups because they're very nourishing, they're very grounding. Yeah, I, I make a lot of vegetable soup and I just mm. mash it with my yeah, potato lovely. masher. I, I approve. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one point. Right? Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't approve of the fruit juice, but I approve of the, 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 the soups. Great. Soups are great. <laughs> if you use the right stock cubes and you make your own bone broths, it's fantastic. It's very healing on the gut. It's yeah. easy on digestion as well because your body's not having to kind of break down lots of carbs, lots of grains, lots of sugars and things. Yeah. So it's yeah. very easy digesting and it's very nourishing, very nourishing. You can add seaweed to it too. Brilliant. There you go. Great. Well. I think that's good actually. I think you've done quite a bit there. Okay. Yeah. Well, Charlotte, it's been <laughs> great. It's great talking to you. It's Thanks funny that we're, we're all doing our little bit yeah, all around the place, aren't we? We all need to band together in a great big army. That's right. And absolutely. create this tidal wave. Yes. Therefore, I think if you did a bag of, um, of ground linseed with, with, with um, sea greens, I think you would, you know, you'd do very well. What? Well, incorporate, sell it as a new product? Absolutely. I think you'd do really well, yeah. Oh, so this is a, a product development it. Yeah, talk. exactly. <laughs> well, that's, that's to be had with Simon, but I'm just putting the thought out there. <laughs> And we know what happens the, when we put thoughts out. That's right, it's a power suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte, it's been brilliant to meet you, yes, and thank thanks. you so much for coming along and chatting. My and, pleasure. And um, maybe we'll just convince a few more people to, we will. to, make, to make change. Absolutely. Uh, I like to think it's more about inviting people to see the opportunity in it. Yeah. What a good idea. Yes. <laughs> brilliant. Thank you. Thanks thank very you, much. Thank you, Charlotte. Well, there we are. That was the lovely Charlotte Palmer. What a lovely approach she had to uh, all of that topic. And I love the idea that we invite people to see the opportunity for making change so as to improve their health. That was really lovely. Thank you very much, Charlotte, and I hope everybody enjoyed that. There's a couple of little tips uh, this week, which... Uh, one was something I read in the newspaper and apparently a lot of the reasons for drains being blocked are baby wipes, any kind of wipes that are really non-degradable. Don't flush them down the loo, put them in the bin. Apparently they cause hundreds of thousands of blocks every year. I think they blow up a bit like a balloon and they just don't flow down through the pipes properly. So my tip for today, or one of the tips for today, don't flush those down the loo. The other little tip, um, which uh, is to do with the weather really, all these poor people suffering from flooded houses and things, um, might be a good idea to take a tip from Venice. And uh, I tell people that linseed oil is the reason that Venice doesn't sink into the lagoon. And it's probably a bit of a bit of a big claim but actually they do make special venetian plaster which incorporates linseed oil so if you have flood or when you've got water coming up against your house um, it won't go through or maybe on the inside um, it's helpful too so that it doesn't all uh, deteriorate if you get a flood you have to be very careful with the linseed oil because the, the proportions have to be just right uh, it's not just a question of bowing some in and that'll do the job. It has to be mixed out very accurately. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, if people have got a danger of flooding, uh, that's something that could be taken on board uh, and maybe would help in later years so you don't have such much of a disaster uh, when the house does flood. So that's the second of my tips for today and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the whole program uh, a bit of a rant at the beginning I know but uh, a really important rant and increasingly we're seeing more research and more people buying into the idea 
that food is really terrifically important to keep us well and produce new life. And as I said before, it's not going to be long before we look back and wonder why on earth we were eating ourselves ill with such uh, gay abandon with addictive food uh, and trying to cure ourselves with uh, pharmaceuticals. We've just got to stop the rot. And I hope um, Charlotte's little talk um, is just one more little step along the line that you could pass on or talk about or think about uh, in order to make change. And of course the talk last week with Nadia Bryden uh, was really good because she suggested the green smoothie in the morning uh, and not bothering about what you eat. But the green smoothie will help moderate your cravings through the day and into the future. Uh, that's what Nadia said anyway. And I'm sure it's true because she's done so much research into the whole thing. So there we have it. This at the end of another show, another week gone by in a flash. Um, but we've actually, at least we've had a couple of extra dry days this week, which lifts the spirit a bit. So hopefully next week will be the same. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to uh, talking to you all again next week. Bye. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? sleep.
break of day. I wish that I. Everything that was lost and won, when the day is done, when the day is done, hope so much a race will all be won. Then you find you jump the gun, gotta go back where you began. When the day is done, do 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 do. Do 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 Got no place to call your home. Got no one to call your own. When the bird is flown. Do 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 When the party's through, means so very sad for you. Didn't do the things you were meant to do. Gotta go back and start anew. When the party's through, when the game's been fought, you speed the ball across the court. Lost so much sooner than you would have thought. Now the game's been fought. When the day is done, down to earth and sinks the sun, along with everything that you lost and won. When the day is done.